Good evening, welcome back. It is Sunday, June 4th, 2023. We have a couple of birthdays and a couple of events. And these events really, uh, the, the events for today's date, I'm going to tell you it's a tale of firsts and lasts and nothing in between. Uh, I reviewed a lot of events. Of course, this is traditionally the weekend after the Indy 500 slash Coke 600. So Indy cards for many years were at... Milwaukee Mile, and not a lot of events happened up there that I remember or thought was really, really interesting, but Dover, on the other hand, another one-mile track, quite the opposite. So we're going to start in 1988. Bobby Hillen won the Bush race there that day, um, his first career Bush Series win. Kind of an uneventful race, except at the end. Larry Pollard was driving Harry Gantz, uh, Ed Whitaker car, number seven, the Skull car, had a tire go down, had something happen, and he crashed hard. <clears throat> he suffered a basilar skull fracture and was in a coma for a while. He did recover and come back to race again. Uh, if you listen to his interview on the Scene, Pod, uh, Scene Vault podcast, he really goes into a lot of detail about the aftermath of that crash and how it affected him thereafter. But it was a very, very vicious crash. 1994 on this date. Also at Dover, Mike Wallace wins his first career Bush Series race. Mike would win three races in 1994, this being the first. And this was kind of a trend where, over the years, Dover would become the, the hot spot for Bush Series drivers getting their first wins. Talladega was always that way for Cup, but then uh, Dover kind of became that way for the Bush Series. So anyway, let's keep this rolling. 1995, the very next year, Kyle Petty wins on the first Cup Series race on the concrete. They uh, took up the asphalt, put down concrete. Kyle Petty won the first race there on that surface, and this would be his final career Cup Series win. And then, uh, if you watch that race, there was a pretty big crash at the beginning of the race, because Kyle did start 37th in that race. If you watch the race, there was a huge crash at the beginning, and it probably did help Kyle's chances as there was not a lot of contenders left but nonetheless he was the first one to complete the 500 lap distance on this day in 2007 martin truex jr wins at dover for his first cup series win uh, driving for dei in the one car and i believe this would actually be the last win for this configuration of DEI before the Ganassi merger. And I don't know that they had a win when they merged with... Well, they did. They won at Daytona with McMurray. But um, I believe this was the last <clears throat> standalone win for DEI as a company. Martin Truex Jr. And our final Dover moment from 2017, Jimmy Johnson wins, well, to this point in time, his final career Cup Series race. He had a crash at Pocono a few weeks later that many think changed his driving style. And why did I throw my notes away? I'm not done yet. <clears throat> Birthdays. Born on this day in 2006, but passed away in 1983. A car owner that was light years ahead of his time, Mr. Carl Kiekhafer. He owned the uh, cars, those uh, white Chrysler 300s that were sponsored by Mercury Outboards, later had to change the name to Kike for Outboards because everybody thought the cars were Mercury's and not Chrysler 300s. Uh, he had he was the first owner to have multiple cars, first owner to have uniforms for the drivers, and he had very, very strict rules. Very interesting guy if you go back and try to read what you can about him. Um, he was kind of, in a way, the uh, like a, a Hendrick or a Gibbs of his day. But I think that uh, if he would have came in in the 80s or 90s with this mentality, if, if if he was, you know, born 40 years later, 50 years later, he would have been a rock star in NASCAR today. So as far as an owner, because he was very, very innovative. <clears throat> born on this date in 1945 is off-road truck legend Iron Man Ivan Stewart. Don't have any cards of his that I can remember. I do know, I was looking up uh, what he was in, and he was in some of those uh, Upper Deck, uh, or Gaudi, or whoever, Sports Kings. But we do have two birthdays, born on this date. In 2004, one of the youngest ones that we've had on the channel that we have a card of, Mr. Sammy Smith. So, 19 today for our current Xfinity Series 
uh, driver. Of course, he has a win. Does he have a win this year? I think he's got a win this year. Phoenix, maybe? Yeah, that sounds right. So, Sammy Smith. And born on the state in 1953. Sadly, he passed away in 2017. Hopefully, he'll get in the Hall of Fame sometime. Former crew chief, Barry Dodson. Barry spent a lot of time at Blue Max Racing, crew chiefing for Tim Richmond and Rusty Wallace. Of course, he is the 1989 Cup Series crew chief, champion crew chief. <clears throat> After 1990, he moved over the new Team 3, which was uh, Sam McMahon or Sam McMahon, however you pronounce it, uh, the third. Started this team, hired Barry Donson as a crew chief, Lou LaRosa as an engine builder, Mickey Gibbs as a driver. This was going to be a new super team, and it just totally fell flat. Not sure what happened there, but uh, Barry was crew chief and a jackman. He was a very competent jackman of his day. He moved over to Whit Whitcomb's team, Bob Whitcomb, be crew chief for Derek Cope. That team folded. Seemed like, uh, look, I mean, you think about it, the Blue Max team folded in 1990. 91, Team 3, then Bob Whitcamp. I mean, it just seems like Barry just had a lot of bad luck wherever he went. He went to DW's team to be a crew chief there for a minute. And uh, there you see Barry once again with the Western Auto Gear. And then he ended up going to Sabco for a little bit to be crew chief for Kyle Petty. I believe he was crew chief for Kyle's last win. And then he just kind of, I don't want to say he faded into obscurity, but the crew chiefs of the of the eighties, the that that era of the eighties, were being replaced by crew chiefs who were more structured and geared in race strategy and engineering, versus you know having fast pit stops and 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 just hard driving. So you could kind of see a change there. Where 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 crew chiefs like Barry Dotson and Doug Reichert, and I'm I'm trying to think of Joey Knuckles and a few of these other ones were kind of being cast off to the side in favor of, of that new group coming in, pretty much being led by Ray Everham. You know, you look at that, because Larry Mack was starting to transition out, a few others of that era, Kirk Shelmerding was transitioning out. But you, you had these innovators, you know, like Greg Zipidelli coming in, and, and like I said, Ray Everham and a few of the others of that generation were just coming in with a different way of looking at things, and totally change the crew chief role so anyway very very nice birthdays today hope you all enjoyed it um, make sure you come back tomorrow not sure what we're going to do tomorrow uh, have a lot of stuff here to rip still have a little, some cards from flea markets that we haven't been through and card shops and etc etc maybe we'll get to those shortly so anyway thanks again for watching enjoy the rest of your sunday and we will see you tomorrow